we now have our first keynote. It's no pressure. Uh, Francisco Tito uh, Rivas is our first uh, keynote, and, uh, and it was wonderful to speak beforehand. This is the wonderful opportunity when we have um, folks coming in to talk. Um, and just let me briefly introduce Tito. He's an artist, he's a musician, he's a creator, he's a leader, he's a researcher. He's the general director of Mexico's Sound Archive. He really thinks about the social and ethical uh, issues about access and about reuse. And um, one of the things I read in his bio which really struck with me was his interest in the archaeology of listening. So without much further ado, I'm going to introduce Tito and bring him to the stage. We will work within English and Spanish. And could we say a big shout out to Kirsi, Kirsi for, for, for being our translator? Thank you. Could we thank our translator as well? Thank you from our, 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 our community. So over to Tito and thank you for being our first keynote, Tito. And we'll take questions and answer questions after the speech. Thank you. Good, mor good morning, everybody. It's a very pleasure and um, uh, uh, joy to be here uh, in this very interesting uh, uh, Global Creative Commons Summit. Thank you very much, Catherine, for this kind introduction. Thank you, Christian, for doing the translation. Yes, I'm speaking in English now, but uh, I think I would be better on my uh, local language, which is Spanish, uh, but we can do together the work to transmit these ideas I am going to, uh, to share with all you, everybody. Welcome to Mexico City. On behalf of uh, Ministry of Culture of Mexican government, Secretaría de Cultura del Gobierno de México, uh, our min uh, Secretaria Alejandra Frausto and Marina Vespalova, Subsecretaria de Desarrollo Cultural, uh, uh, who could, uh, was not available to join with all, all of you, but she sends uh, her regards and their, their wishes that this meeting will be uh, a, a, um, a very um, uh, important and, and useful and nutritious for all of the community, all of, of us that uh, are part of a cultural digital community and all the very important subjects that you are going to discuss uh, with deep and, uh, and enthusiasm on the next uh, days. Um, my intention I am doing it in English. You are doing it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but it's not uh, quite proper. Uh, but well, uh, maybe with the, some concepts, I, I can have the, the, the help from you, uh, Christian. <laughs> Christian. Um, well, I, uh, you, all of you, I suppose you are experts, or you have uh, devoted a lot of your time to study and understand the complexity of the digital culture of nowadays, of, of our days. Um, maybe I'm not an expert, and to me it's uh, maybe complicated to stand here uh, to offer you uh, um, as an academic or uh, um, a scientific study of this complex subjects, but um, I would just like to try to share with you some thoughts, uh, some reflections that we as part of a cultural community based on Mexico, on Latin America, and of course on this very interesting and <laughs> also complex city, which is Mexico City, can uh, share with you uh, Maybe just in order to open uh, the discussions that I am pretty sure 
that they will be very uh, more deep and more accurate uh, in, the, in the discussions and in the very interesting panels uh, uh, that you have been uh, uh, organized. Uh, so to me, uh, would be more uh, the possibility to share with you, as I said, uh, some ideas, uh, some reflections about how we can think about um, cultural heritage in the digital context of, of today. Since a perspective of a country as we are, Mexico, which we are not like, or, you know, uh, we, are, um, uh, we are in Latin America, we maybe, uh, we are in a very strange condition because, because we are half in the north and half in the south. <laughs> Uh, and so we are a very multicultural, uh, deeply multicultural country, uh, uh, even in the way that it's difficult to name it as just one country in some moments. So uh, from, th from that perspective, uh, I would like to share, uh, and, and also from, uh, from the place that I can uh, share with you, which which is my uh, um, enunciation, how, how do we say, uh, uh, point, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, Your uh, point of view, or? Sí, como el, el punto de enunciación, ¿no? Desde donde lo decimos. Uh, yeah, the point where you start, since your perspective. Yeah, well, yeah, si since, since our perspective of uh, people that works in the cultural area. And also people that, work as me since the last 15 years in the public institutions of the Ministry of Culture. I am actually, just, just to understand from which place I am talking to you, I am, as Cathy kindly said, uh, uh, director of the uh, National Sound Archive of Mexico, which is called Fonoteca Nacional. I am very pleased to invite you, if you have some time, to visit us. We are on the Coyoacan neighborhood, a very nice neighbor, uh, neighborhood on the south of the city, <laughs> not very f uh, near from here. And what we do in that archive is, well, as the name says, we conserve, preserve, and disseminate the sound patrimony of Mexico, the sound heritage. So it's not a small archive. It's, a, it's an archive that uh, contains more than 600,000 different items, which uh, complains, uh, not which um, involves um, records, uh, analogical and digital, of course, um, uh, radio documents, um, voice of writers, but of artists, but of common people, uh, indigenous languages, which is very important, uh, traditional and uh, reg regional, regional, regional music. And uh, it's a very wide and very uh, profound uh, collection, more than 250 five different collections of audio that we as a public institution and we as part of the Ministry of Culture uh, have the obligation and the uh, enthusiastic uh, uh, job and task of, of uh, care and um, uh, help to spread. So for us, uh, we are completely into the cultural heritage cultural patrimony, and the access, which I think is one of the main subjects that you are going to be discussing on the next days. Um, as a public institution, uh, we have to think not only in the institution itself, but in the society that we are devoted for or to work for. Uh, so the thinking you have to develop when working on public institution is public. 
and it's about sharing and about a word that to me will be very important to mention and I will do it uh, uh, more than two times now, is to put in common. Does it make sense in English? Put in common? Yeah. Uh, Creative common. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> um, to put in common is uh, uh, a way to think, and I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you can uh, be, feel identified with that. It's the, the idea of, uh, of establish an horizontal, horizontal line of communication. And of course, uh, uh, an atmosphere in which everybody can participate from and since the difference that we everybody have. Uh, to put it in common is not to establish an homogene homogenization. It's not that everybody has to think the same. It's not that everybody has to feel the same. We can disagree. We cannot understand us between each, each others. But we are in the same place, and we are in the, in the same situation that we live in the planet, and we are living beings. And I think it, the, 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 root, the root of that goes to that very, very uh, um, essence of what is to be a human being. And what is to be a human being, not only as human being, but as a part of the nature. Uh, to, to us, to our originary cultures, to be part of the nature is not to feel different from what is outside of us. We are on the same entourage, on the same surrounding, on the same... Uh, environment. Uh, environment, thank you, Christy. So, that connection... Uh, to me, it's, it's, it's a departing point to process and reflect how we can manage the complexity of the digital life of today. And the big problems, because they are big problems, uh, of dealing with the economical and the social and the uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, demographic uh, uh, problems that our contemporary societies are living today. If we feel that we are in a common uh, ground, well, it's some kind of a starting point of something. Uh, so this is maybe just like words, but if, if if you have it in your mind and in your heart when you work, you possibly may have the option or possibility to develop an, an strategy or an ethics of working in the place that we work. For example, the place, uh, uh, those that we work with archives, for example. So, for those that we work with archives, we have to develop a principle of ethical uh, uh, um, correspondencia or attitude or comportamiento, behavior, behavior. could be. Um, in, the, in the moment that we are dealing with something that is, that we keep, and, the, and, the, and then we, wa we have the, the very uh, excited, exciting job of disseminating and publicitizing, but that is not from us uh, specifically. I, I didn't make it, no? Uh, for example, we have a lot of uh, indigenous or, uh, or not indigenous, but popular music that has been made for someone. And, and our mission is to spread it because we think that it's very important that what people do can have the, the window, and, and that's why the states, at least in Mexico, uh, 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 intervenes 
to, to construct, to build the wider, the, the more extensive window to share cultural contents. But these contents are produced by someone. And this someone is a, a people, a person, a human being with, as you know, with its own cosmovision, its own prejudices also, its own uh, compromises, political, social, familiar. So uh, for those who works in archives, uh, it's not only the document, because sometimes our specialization is, okay, uh, yeah, we study a lot on what a document is, is, sorry, uh, uh, what is made of, uh, what distinguish the di distinct classes of documents, and also how you put it in, how you establish the way to uh, make it public, and the metadata and the cataloging, and all these uh, very interesting things, by the way, but which are not maybe sometimes the essence that is behind the document, which is more in the side of the person that made it, in the community in which that document grows up, and of course in the expression or the problematic or the um, philosophy of life that involves the creation of that content. Uh, so uh, we think that, uh, uh, or I think maybe, uh, that uh, from a, a perspective of, of public institutions, we have to be very aware of, of, of what we are working with and how we manage to, res to be always respectful and of course, conscience of what we are dealing with. And then this, th this became a, a complex problem because you want to spread it, you want to share it, you want to uh, uh, show uh, uh, how, import what, uh, how important is these creations are. And at the same time, uh, you want also that people that make it have uh, the possibility to earn from that and to live from this. Because if they are artists or they are, um, yeah, artists in general, no? That they could, they could make music or they could make uh, arte textil? Um, uh, fa uh, fabric art. Fabric art, thank you. Uh, or, um, or uh, as we call here, uh, artesanía, uh, handcraft? Yes. No? And we, now we're in a very deep and very strong uh, um, movement of calling handcraft art, an art in, in all its rights, no? Uh, so, uh, uh, no matter what you do, uh, at the end, if you are an artist and you are a creator, it's fair that you can live from that. Uh, so the, the role of the state in that mediation is very important. In Mexico, you will see it, if there are here any Mexicans, uh, you will not allow me to lie. <laughs> 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 Is that exist in English? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a phrase in Spanish, I just translated. Uh, that uh, Mexico has one of the more um, important public estate uh, infrastructure for culture uh, globally, I should, I, I, I should say. Uh, in, other, in other countries, for example, culture has. Uh, runs more into the support of uh, private foundations, for, ex for example. Uh, uh, or in the, yeah, pri private foundations, um, uh, uh, becas. Uh, scholarships. Scholarships or whatever. Uh, but here in Mexico, since a lot of time, 
we, we have created an a, a, a infrastructure that depends from the state that has the obligation to uh, uh, provide uh, the access to cultural patrimony. So we have a lot of museums, maybe you will visit some of them. We have a lot of um, archives also. We are one of the few countries that, that have a national sound archive, which is not existed in all the countries. And uh, well, we are a little proud of that, <laughs> but we have a lot, also a lot of problems. It's, it's not my intention to say how, how uh, great we are. Uh, my, my intention is to transmit to you that um, the, uh, to us it's a very important reflection nowadays how to deal in the middle of the creators and the audiences. And of course, the problem of, of copyrights and the problem of earning and the problem of, of, uh, of a fair uh, retribution, uh, it's on the air. <laughs> and, and well, it, it's a problem you will discuss, and uh, of course, maybe it's, it's a, a, a commonplace. Uh, ¿Sí se dice commonplace? ¿Lugar común? ¿Se dice en inglés? ¿Cómo dices lugar común en inglés? Yeah, like a, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I am thinking now in Spanish too. Um, sorry, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, sounds. Yeah, common. Commonplace. I yeah. mean, like when you say something that is obvious, no? Yeah. Uh, that, that's what I mean. Um, uh, but it's not obvious when you are in dealing with the problem. I want to spread this, this sound document, but I want to ask for the permission. And yes, it's very nice and... Um, um, and important that people know it, but also it's very nice that, the, uh, that they know, uh, not only know the document, but they know the people that made it. So the attribution of who made things, who makes things, it's very important nowadays for us. And uh, unfortunately, our, our institutional uh, development or our institutional um, uh, yeah, like um, uh, architectonics, maybe has been not this, uh, developed to, to think on that especially. Because yes, we have to accept that maybe more, many of our institutions came from a, a past that has a different view with a more maybe a colonialist point of view maybe. Or, or, or from a view in which, for example, to create the idea of a state, you have to dilute, dilute or diluir, uh, to, 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 to uh, hide the different peoples, populations that are part of that state. And for example, to create a common language, Spanish, you have to hide all the the indigenous languages. So our institutions have been growth in that mentality. And today we have to accept that and deal with it. So I think it's part of the discussion. Uh, to me it's just only to establish or to uh, suggest that uh, from a perspective, since we are public institutions, we have a lot of work in discussing our methods, our ways to get uh, uh, close to the people, and, and of course our methods to put all the, the cultural contents in the digital global um, web, World Wide Web, okay? Uh, so what, that, that's, that's an important question. Uh, I will add uh, a little more, two, two or three more thoughts and I, and I finish. And if we have problems of time, you just, because yes, I'm just running more comfortably, but thank you very much, <laughs> Christian. And I hope this could be maybe more interesting for you. Uh, uh, 
for example, uh, uh, Mexico ha ha uh, has developed and, um, an important thinking about the dealing with, uh, or, uh, with uh, indigenous populations and with, uh, and with all the, our uh, big, big diversity. We have uh, 68 different languages in the territory with more than 300 variations of that languages, which means that from, from, <laughs> from, from, uh, from a hill to the other hill, it's different language, no? <laughs> in, so, in some places, no? So, um, uh, uh, Mexican state has been uh, uh, dealing with that thinking in the whole 20th century, but nowadays, we have to do it in a, in a more global point of view. Not only thinking from our country and our necessities, but thinking on how this is uh, developing in all different parts of the world because many places live the, the same situation or very near to that. And fortunately, uh, uh, every day, the, the, the conscience of how cultural expressions are so essential for human living are growing every day. And a proof of that is that uh, last year uh, was, this, uh, the, was organized this meeting called Mondia Cult. I, I'm not sure if you are aware of that, but if not, it's maybe good to know it, that was placed in Mexico City, was the host uh, of, an, of an international convention of of, uh, of mini, uh, culture, Ministry of Cultures of all the uh, uh, countries uh, that belongs to UNESCO. UNESCO, se dice in, in English? Sorry, UNESCO se dice Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, in English? Yeah. Ah, sorry, thank you. <laughs> and in that convention, all the countries signed by a unanimous uh, approbation, a declaratory in which culture has name as an essential common for uh, humanity. Which is important because it's very hard that in the UNESCO to get uh, unanim something get approved unani for by una unanimously. Yeah. Uh, but this it, it was a great success for culture and for the recognition of uh, how no, it, it doesn't matter which, from which country you are, which language do you speak, uh, which beliefs uh, what do you have, uh, <laughs> you, you have a culture and Culture is the expression of what is the more essence from you and your community. So in this context, uh, and the declaration of, of Mondia Cult, you can read it, you can consult it in the unesco.org page. It's written about the worries that all the countries expressed about the, the how uh, cultural heritage will be managed or is managed and will be in the next future in the, um, um, in the, in the digital uh, uh, world. Uh, and it talks about the artificial intelligence as, as a worry and as the in, uh, artificial intelligence is one of the main subjects of this uh, summit. Um, well, uh, uh, of course, many of you are going to say it on the next days, but well, I will be the first. <laughs> uh, it's very important to be aware in a, in a more um, conscious and, and in, in a more technologically um, uh, uh, informed uh, way how uh, AI works 
and how we can use it. It's very important, you know it more than me, that we cannot, no podemos permitir, no debemos permitir, we can't uh, allow. allow. We can't allow. We should. We, we can't allow that uh, uh, technology is lead uh, is le uh, be leaded by organizations who no ever uh, no ones know which are their <laughs> their uh, final uh, objectives or or interests, interests in, in, in or purposes. Or purposes, gracias. Um, for example, for us w that we work in, in, in the dissemination of cultural heritage, of course, AI is a very in, their interesting tool uh, that allows, for example, for archives, as in which what I, that I work, that allows us, for example, to do better uh, cataloging of the items. It allows to make automatic translations if needed, which is very important for, um, yeah, dissemination. Uh, of course, uh, it's very important to think and to be aware how artificial translators are done in some idioms and languages but not for all the languages. So if one, I want to translate something from Zapoteco or from Chinanteco or from, uh, or from uh, Nahuatl, it would be more hard to do it because the machine has not been educated to do that. But who, who must do that? Who has to do that? Who has to educate the machine to learn the languages that has to be pronounced or that we want to hear and that we want to understand. I hope that somebody will, will uh, talk about this matter because to me it's a very interesting uh, aspect. And also, and maybe finally, because I don't want to uh, b bor borrow you, aburrir? No. Yeah, bo boring you. Boring you. <laughs> is that um, it's also very important to think about the biases, los sesgos, no? Biases of when we do uh, algorithms. Uh, in terms of, of dissemination of cultural heritage, um, to me it's very important to think what the machine is going to put in front of me. What is the machine going to put in front of me? Is the machine going to put in front of me something that the market wants me to consume? Something that the states want me, the state want me to think that it's important? Something that the, some community want to express by, the, by, its, by the itself and want wanted to share? Ah, to me, it's a very big question. I'm not an expert, so maybe could be a naive uh, uh, thinking. Uh, I will try to stay on the, on the panels to get uh, more into that. But um, yeah, um, uh, uh, Kathy said that I, I, she, she was interested that I, I was developing some thoughts about archaeology of listening. And just to relate it with that, to, to, to maybe it could be interesting for you. Uh, uh, archaeology of listening has, has to deal with how do we listen and what we listen to. And yeah, you can, do an, uh, you can think that as, ar as an, as an in an archaeological site, it's made of strata. It's made of different layers, uh, which the archaeologists uh, uh, sink, no? Ex excava, sink, um, or how you say, uh, dig, 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 yeah, yeah. dig out yeah. Uh, to yeah, 
to see how they are establishing the ground. And when, once they do that, they can say, okay, yeah, this is a community that uh, belongs to that period, or in that time they do this, or they believe this, just because they see how the objects are uh, um, placed on the different layers that uh, form the ground, okay? If we think on that, on listening, we can, th we can maybe uh, uh, imagine that our, uh, our, our like in listening is made in the same way. It's made of layers of all the things you have been uh, uh, exposed to during your life, but even before, because when you born and grow, you do, the, you do it in a specific community, and the way that community hears, it's modeled, no? It's modeled, previous to you. Uh, Michel Foucault, a philosopher, should say uh, it's a, a, a historic, historical a priori. Uh, it's historical, but it's before the individual, okay? So, it's just that with the archaeology. But if we relate it with uh, how do, which are the practice of listening and which are the practices of consuming, for example, audio in the platforms and audio from the wide and very huge uh, uh, community worldwide that makes audio and put it on the web, on their on different websites, Bandcamp, uh, SoundCloud, um, and of course the commercial one, uh, Spotify, and so on. Um, well, to me it's important how, in that context, algorithms are uh, conducting or intervening in the in the in the uh, developing or the creation of the layers of what we listen and why we listen to. To me, that's very important. Uh, I think in a, in a global community uh, dimension, uh, uh, technologies uh, will allow uh, that all the diversity, all the cultural diversity can create its own platforms and its own way to develop the algorithms that they, that they needed. Maybe it's a dream. Um, but it's important to think it. For example, in a, in a country as Mexico that, of course, our uh, connection with technology is not us high as, as could be in other countries. Uh, thinking maybe from common people, and we are talking about common. We are talking about the more common that we are, and, the, and we, I say in the beginning that is the ground from we depart. Uh, even Elon Musk is a common people, or should be. What we need to think, in my opinion, is to develop ways of reflect on how from the cultural diversity and from uh, cultural cosmovision, we can use or not technology to create our own listening or viewing windows. The window is important because you can do a great effort to preserve or to keep the heritage, but, it, but it, if the window is orientated to other view or to other landscape, uh, it's not connected. Uh, well, I think that, that could be one of our reflections. Uh, a final one is that recently I, I had notices that the WIPO, which is like the uh, um, World uh, International Intellectual Property 
yeah, WIPO, thank you, thank you, uh, um, has, been, uh, has been started a discussion about some limitations of the, of the copyrights uh, based on the importance of cultural patrimony. It's like to create the idea that in a case when, for example, you uh, or the, a public institution, for example, um, uh, invest resources into some, into keep some contents, even with that contents are protected by uh, copyright, which is naturally, of course, with the diversity of the law in the different countries. Uh, they have also the right uh, to use it because they are uh, um, uh, uh, they are touching at something that is not uh, special, specifically material or economical or qua uh, qu uh, quantitative, quantitative, mm -hmm. but which has to be with the aura, yeah. Aura, do, do you understand aura? Like Walter Benjamin's aura, the era of their technical reproductibility, the aura of the, of the arts. Uh, so if we think that pa cultural heritage has an aura, has like this, uh, uh, I should say more spiritual, uh, 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 Rob, Rob, vestimenta, como una vestimenta espiritual. Okay, sounds, uh, <laughs> sounds a little bit, uh, not weird, but uh, complicated. But, but yeah, like a dress, a spiritual like a dre dress. Like a spiritual yeah. dress, thank you very much. <laughs> like a spiritual dress, which is not the object, and it's not the content, and it's not the digitized, digitization process that it's behind it. It's the life that it's behind it. And it's that life that I said in the beginning, it's on this common ground from where we need to establish a different way to communicate each other and to try to understand us in a better way. So I th think that's enough, that could be my message <laughs> for today. Thank you very much, and uh, we uh, wish that you have a very successful and very nutritious, as I say, uh, summit. And thank you very much, Catherine, for hosting this possibility. And we now have a few moments for some questions, and I thought I would actually um, go to Peter, um, who has some really interesting observations like yourself on sound. So could I maybe invite Peter to ask the first question? Sorry, everyone, but I just thought rather than getting that awkward silence of no one actually asking a question, I'd just jump to Peter, who's actually our keynote tomorrow, to give him the opportunity to say something with uh, Tito. Here is the microphone. Uh, kia ora. I was fascinated by your comment about the archaeology of listening and um, how we listen before we are born and we bring experiences into the way that we practice listening and learning. And I was wondering if you could just expand on that a little bit. Kia ora. <laughs> Please don't do it. <laughs> My PhD <laughs> thesis. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Well, um, this idea is uh, it has to deal uh, with, um, yeah, the the a question that maybe m many of you have been uh, uh, asked, yeah. which is, why I do listen the music that I listen. No, the, did you do you, this question to yourselves? Why do you listen the music? Do you listen? Because it seems like obvious, but if you go uh, further or, or deeply, it's, it's, it's not. Uh, 
it seems like it, it seems to us like it's it's a decision that we make. Um, <laughs> but once to go into the layers of that process, if you understand that your listening is not uh, just a couple of ideas, huh? um, I, I just I, and I more idea, one more idea to to complete the the, the argument. Um, we think that we hear that our listening is transparent with, uh, with what we listened to. I mean, we think that we listen what we listen. listen. But, but now there is a mediation. The ear is a, is a medium. And the ear and the brain and the brain and the, and the cultural uh, setup in which you are made up, it's a medium that always intervenes in the perceptual process. So I, I'm talking about listening because it's my field, but maybe that's, this could be applied to other senses. Uh, so if there is no transparency between what we listen and our listen capacities, I mean that listening is mediated, that mediation is exactly the, what an archaeologue should explore in a very Foucauldian, Foucauldian uh, way. Uh, and also in a very Foucauldian way, what we should call, uh, a, a, in French, dispositif. No? Or in English, uh, device. But it, uh, maybe the, in, in English is not uh, any, as interesting <laughs> as in French. <laughs> It's not as, as sexy now. Feels different. <laughs> no, because we have dispositivo on Spanish, which is perfect. Yeah. The dispositivo, the dispositivo aural, as we can call it. So, this 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 device, this dispositive, is not technological. It's cultural. Yeah. But when you relate it to the digital or the technological uh, platforms. It's, it's, it's into that, it's, it's uh, in breathe or how to say, no? So yeah, I, 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 now I think a, a, a good discussion could be one like uh, how the oral uh, dispositives or devices that we have grow in a cultural are related with the creation of algorithms. And how technology and uh, are influencing what you think is a decision that you made, which is something that it's, it's not new. We, we, know, we know that. Uh, so, well, it's more, in that, more, in, more or less into that, I think. Uh, yeah, we can talk later, of course. It would be a pleasure. Yeah. So now we've got the first question, and we've got a few more minutes. Great. There's, a, someone, there's two. This is wonderful. Uh, my name is Amanda Stevens, and I work in libraries and archives. And I liked that you said that a catalog record or an archival record doesn't capture the essence of an item, um, which and the essence of an item is the the person and the community and the the culture behind it. And I was wondering if you have experimented with ways to incorporate that into the metadata, or in how you do exhibitions for. Um, items in your collection. We'll just take the two questions together, if that's okay, because I know our time is tight. Brilliant. Lady up there. Thank you. Tito, thank you very much for your talk. That was really fascinating. Um, my name is Patricia Murrieta Flores. I'm a professor in digital humanities at Lancaster University in the UK, and I'm also an archaeologist, so I was quite interested as well in your concept about excavating sound. Um, my question is rather about uh, what you mentioned at the very beginning, right? Mexico is a, has a very complex scenario in terms of being obviously the multicultural and multi-ethnic and multi-language uh, country that we are. We also have in a parallel, let's say, the discourses of nation that normally our country, you know, kind of like uh, not only creates, but also endures and, and suffers. And I was wondering how um, your work at you know, your own institution actually um, deals with 
uh, integrating, for instance, indigenous voices into the work that you do? Okay, thank you. Great questions, both. Uh, let's see if I can do great answers. Mm, well, the, f the first for, uh, I sorry, I, I forgot your name. Amanda. Amanda, Amanda, nice to meet you. Amanda, yeah, well, uh, yeah. I think it's a, it's a, uh, um, a uh, challenge. challenge. It's a challenge for all the archives to, to be very conscious of how they, or we are doing our cataloging methods in order to, to get the more closer that we can. Because maybe it's like an utopia, maybe it's like a great ideal, but of course in the practical ground could be sometimes very difficult, mainly when you work with historical archives. So wh when, you, when these archives were made or with these documents were registered, they maybe have no, had no the, the time or the conscious or the awareness of to write everything and to, to uh, put in the paper which person is talking or which language it is. Or maybe they, do, they did it, but they did not understand the language, for example. It happens a lot in the ethnographical uh, archives that there was a, I could say a genuine interest to record a stranger language. I mean, a stranger because I do not speak it, so I consider to myself a stranger language. And I record it because it makes some fascinating it makes a fascination, the sound and the alterity that is expressed onto that. I would like to think on that good uh, way because there are others not as good as, no? But was, but yeah, but I just have the sound. I only have the significant, but not the, the, the meaning. The meaning. No, significant mattering, but I don't have the meaning. And I don't have the resources as a, as a, as a documentalist to really um, express what is that. So yeah, um, uh, nowadays there has been growing an approach of working with archives uh, in which uh, uh, is impulsing, uh, it's been imposed this, uh, uh, this thinking about how you manage with the metadata mainly, for example, when you are working with indigenous uh, populations, and maybe I can connect that with uh, Patricia's question. Thank you very much also. Um, yeah, um, when, for example, um, there is an initiative that I found very interesting that it's called uh, Local Context, which occurs in the, in the, gra in the scene of the uh, YNU, New York, NYU University, uh, that I uh, recently uh, have notice of it, that they are making, they are working with archives uh, in order to create like, like uh, uh, labels associated to the metadata of the, of the documents in which uh, a, an originary community can participate for example, completing the information or fulfilling the, the missing information. And even a th something that I found it very, very interesting and hard to do, of course, uh, also, uh, it's that, for example, the possibility even to write it in, in, the, in the language, not in the language of the, of the documentalist, but or in the language, the main language of the archive, because the the archive have a language. Mm. No, uh, maybe you are thinking on that, uh, Patricia. The the archive is made from a language usually, mm -hmm. and when when the archive has to deal with multi languages, it's a problem, or it's uh, yeah, it's problematic. It's uh, it's it it it, it uh, offers uh, a a, a multi dimensional thinking. Because could be, for, for example, the graphics, no? Or how do you write it? Because maybe the language has not uh, written 
uh, syllabus, no? Uh, alphabet, which is not bad. I mean, there are a lot of oral languages. They don't need it. <laughs> For many times we thought that was like a mean of uh, low civilization or whatever. No, we understand fully, I think. Uh, yeah, that, uh, no, they don't need it. They don't need writing. So how do you translate that to a, gri to a completely base writing system as our cultural yeah, is, is now, no? For example, no? maybe to make it more dramatic. But yes, um, for example, we have a platform, it's called Musiteca. Uh, we are going to launch it, that a new version, and on this new version, we are incorporating a text that says that the, that the institution is conscious that many of the documents that uh, are part of it are uh, uh, come from uh, uh, originary uh, communities and that they have the right to be uh, named and to be and to to have the, the right attribution, mm -hmm. at least, mm -hmm. of, the, of the content that is there. If it's a folk uh, 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 um, song, a uh, lullaby song, for example, or if it's a discourse, or if it's a music, they have the right to be named in a proper way. Mm -hmm. So we are, yes, we are, at, at, uh, in this moment, yes, I must confess, we are just like at, at least declaring that we have that intention and, the, and that the archive is open, which is important. I mean, it's important to say it, yeah. uh, but, it's not the, but it's not the job. The job is how to, to get into that, no? And it's a, a big, very big challenge for all the archives. And it's interesting to, to reach out that every day you see more of these discussions on these kind of panels and more people aware of that uh, condition and, and how to, to create a more uh, horizontal and, and diversity-based approach to, to archive and, and, and cultural heritage. So our time is now coming to a close and I would love us, well firstly, I'm going to give you, Tito, a little gift from CC. So thank you very thank you much so for much. being with us. Could you all please show your appreciation? Sorry.